very big news this morning that Dylan, I think you've been at the forefront of covering uh, yet another company getting caught up in this contagion. And this time it's Voyager now filing for chapter 11 bankruptcy. Uh, I open the floor to anyone to just maybe touch on what led to this point and what the fallouts may look like going forward. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to kick it off, but uh, it's great to be here. Um, I've, we've been watching this space over uh, at ARC for um, you know some time as the events have unfolded over the past two months, kind of leading up to this point. Um, and it's kind of all a series of dominoes that have uh, kind of fell one after another, starting with the collapse of Terra back in, uh, back in the beginning of May. Um, it's something that we were watching really closely, um, kind of this uh, algo stablecoin concept that uh, proved to totally fail and unwound like $60 billion of market cap over just a few days. Um, that was seemed like it was relatively isolated at the time uh, in that, uh, you know, 70% of that UST stablecoin was just in the anchor lending protocol, uh, you know, this uh, false pretense of 20% stable yield. Um, so it was a coin that really just existed to yield farm. Uh, but what we kind of soon learned is there are other, you know, notable parties in the crypto space that were kind of tangled up in that, uh, giant yield scheme, uh, namely, uh, Celsius and three arrows capital, uh, Celsius exposure through, uh, liquid state ETH that they were using as collateral on the platform and three arrows as investors in Terra and, uh, you know, notable party who came to their defense as the peg was unwinding, um, those two parties also have been brought to their knees. Uh, you saw Celsius pause withdrawals, uh, most of that because their DeFi holdings were uh, public on chain. And we could see exactly how much liquid uh, ETH and wrapped Bitcoin they had and how much was borrowed against it. Uh, and Three Arrows being a party that had, had tried to defend Terra, um, we learned had borrowed from pretty much everybody under the sun. In some cases, collateralized borrowing from BlockFi or Genesis where their positions were liquidated. In other cases, uh, because of their reputation and name brand in the space, uh, borrowed uncollateralized uh, from parties like Voyager, uh, 650 million uncollateralized loan that um, now that these trades have gone against them, they're, uh, they're going bankrupt. And so is Voyager along with them. It seems like uh, it's a never ending contagion spiral. We've seen so many of these companies and I know Dylan, you've spent a lot of time in and last week, you and Sam released the uh, monthly report highlighting a lot of this contagion. And actually, specifically, we're talking about Voyager possibly be, being the next domino to fall. Sorry, man. The long weekend really got to me, guys. Um, how, how are you guys feeling about this bankruptcy? A little bit validating, I'm sure. But also, is this a cause for maybe some more concern? I'm going to throw out some price action thoughts here for a second. Do you expect some more downside uh, as the result of something like this? Uh, from the Voyager event, not really. Um, it was obvious to me uh, once once we started to see this this contagion really take take hold uh, in, in mid-June, uh, I started going through, and, and not many of these entities are public, like Celsius doesn't publish uh, you know, their, their balance sheet or income statements or anything. Um, but of the few that did, Voyager uh, was, was one of them. Um, and it was... <laughs> You could see that they actually had 350 million dollars of exposure to a Singapore-based entity, um, so it was like speculation. But to me, that's I kind of have a, an ongoing thread where I just post some some updates to all this craziness. Um, but it was, you know, hey, three arrows capitals insolvent, um, and if these guys are on the hook for 350 million at the same time that their shares are down 33 percent in two days, maybe something under the surface is wrong. Um, and not sure about the you know exact numbers of their balance sheet right right now off the top of my head, but basically all of their customers' assets like they didn't have it was like a fractional reserve bank that took a huge impairment loss like they didn't they didn't actually have any equity capital to cushion uh, the massive default that they got that they took on an unsecured loan like that's the craziest part about it is they were they were lending customer funds out unsecured to hedge funds that they thought were industry titans and and were money good plus an interest rate uh, and the reality was they weren't money good and they completely rugged Voyager. And, and really the sad thing is Voyager's uh, customers' deposits. Um, any equity cushion that Voyager had or had grown over the bull market completely ev evaporated in an instant. Um, and so that's why when SBF came out, it was like, hey, like, you know, we're extending a credit line. It was just like, okay, this seems like a, a nothing burger um, because what what is the point of lending to an insolvent business? If the business is insolvent, there's no way they can lend. Uh, and, and once, you know, 
Voyager opens up deposits, all the money's going to run. So that was just like, for me, uh, I mean, not just trying to pick on Voyager here. It's obviously a lot of companies are tangled in this mess, but uh, yeah, I mean, a huge loss that's just, it's irrecoverable. And it's really sad that a lot of people are going to lose, lose their assets. It's why I've been, you know, very outspoken about it. I'm not trying to hurt any business or any person, but you know, that's just the reality of these type of things.